This is the oldest Mayan ruin on Cozumel. It dates back to about 800-900 AD. And it's right off the center of the square in a town called El Cidral. And what's kind of interesting is where it's located. It's located right next to a Catholic church. Now this was the pattern that was established in the fourth century AD by one of the early popes. Basically saying if you want to convert the heathens, what you do is you build the temple or your Catholic church right at the, at the edge or maybe sometimes on top of their temples, which is exactly what happened here in the New World. Essentially, this structure is located in a uh, graveyard, a Catholic graveyard, and you can see some of the uh, stone chairs that they have in remembrance of various people who passed on. But like a lot of my other videos, what's intriguing to me about archaeological sites, of which this is only one little remnant of a large village that was here at one time, are the things around it. If you look closely, you'll see that there are other types of structures. Like here, for example, there's a very large round object. Possibly some type of uh, signature stone. And right next door is this intriguing little mound that clearly has never been excavated. The external portions of this uh, little house-like Mayan uh, ruin has been shored up with uh, modern day stones that you can see here. This is the ancient part. Now what was it? Hard to say, but the Mayans had all sorts of little tiny uh, uh, rooms associated with their temples. Now this El Central is located on top of the ancient Mayan uh, settlement that was here. What's also intriguing is that when the Spaniards first got here in the 1500s, they very quickly took over this particular town and uh, began their takeover of the Yucatan. In fact, they staged their attacks from Cozumel, which is only about 12 miles from the peninsula. And they uh, would sail out there just every other day or so and start their process. They realized that they couldn't settle on the Yucatan directly in the bays or a little coast because the Maya would kill them. So they came out here 12 miles away and shored up their ships, got their strategies together, and moved on. The Spanish military tactic in conquering the Maya was actually pretty simple. Of course, they had steel and they had bows and things like that and horses. The Maya had uh, flint, uh, bow and arrows, and so on. But what the Spaniards did was they rounded up the Maya and they put them in little settlements, or tried to. Some people escaped into the jungle. But then when they consolidated all the people in the little settlements, settlements they either made them into slaves or they killed them outright. Now, the horrible part about this entire affair is that the European diseases that were introduced into this island in the 1500s, almost like 95% of the Maya were killed off by them. Smallpox, typhoid, uh, syphilis, things of that nature. So the, the culture was radically decimated. And yet the going idea was that since these so-called savages had no respect at the time for Christ and other Christian uh, saints and so forth, that it was okay to decimate their culture, it was okay to kill them. And again, it was okay because if they can at least get baptized, the souls would go directly to heaven. Again, the paradigm at the time, the thinking was, in our 21st century perspective, a little bit convoluted, but they radically believed this. And they felt no qualms whatsoever about destroying these people who built amazing structures and temples. People haven't forgotten the atrocities done by the, uh, the name of religion by the conquistadors. In fact, I was chatting with a uh, tour guide uh, kid the other day, and he, was, he went on for about a half an hour reciting the atrocities that his early people, that his ancestors, uh, experienced under the guise of, the, of religion. And uh, he had some incredible oral records. Uh, he was like citing them and so forth. And the anger is still there, which is totally understandable. As you wander around this little village, uh, you can see where powers that be have tried to remember the Maya in some little tacky way, like uh, these little decorations that you see on the side of the monument. 
This is a large um, central meeting area where they have different uh, ceremonies every year, various things. But El Sol Chal, it's, it's a small place. What's intriguing to me is the nature of how the Catholic Church built a church right next to a Mayan ruin and probably on top of other Mayan ruins that were located in the region. In fact, this entire area probably has a large number of uh, structures that have not been excavated. Driving up here, you can see the fields that have been completely, uh, some of them haven't even plowed, they've just been feral. Now, the thing about the jungle, of which 85% of uh, this particular island is, is that the uh, jungle gives up its secrets very slowly and it takes years to excavate. A lot of viewers have asked me why I wear this headband in many of the videos I make. It's actually very simple and practical. I sweat a lot, and this helps to keep the sweat from getting in my eyes when I'm trying to focus on something. But the second has to do with age. When I was young, I had moppy, long, long hair. But, like a lot of men, uh, unfortunately, that is now in my past, so I don't have as much hair as I used to which means that my scalp gets burned when I'm walking around the fields looking at archaeological sites. So the headband protects me. I don't try not to wear a hat that much in the tropics because that's too hot for me and I get overheated. So basically the headband is a practical feature. Uh, if it looks cool, that's great, but that's not my primary reason for wearing it. It's to sweat and also protect my scalp. Hope you like these videos. If you do, please subscribe. Take care. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a like, and do subscribe to the channel by pressing the button below. Until next time, Sal Trento with Mysterious Places.